Go and A broadcasting live from the Sam Adams Brewery in Boston, Massachusetts. The man of the hour sitting with yes. us now, Jim Cook, everyone. Jim. Jim. Jim wow. really dressed for you. Free beer. I feel like a hero. VH1 felt like uh, uh, filming this interview. Yes. I know. They don't know what they're in for. I'll My tell you right now. My dreams of running for political office are over. <laughs> uh, something tells me. It's getting recorded, we are dead. That ended a while ago. Uh, Jim, you're in this suit that I guess what you wore in the dunking tank. Yes. Now, you're still wet, full of beer, and that was two-month-old beer that you were being dunked in? It was into? actually five-month-old beer. Five-month-old five beer. We had to do something with it. It didn't meet our freshman standards. We pulled it off the shelf. The choice was either we give it to a needy fraternity <laughs> or I take a bath in it. So I went into the tank. But you couldn't change? I mean, I, I've been busy. I've been following Darva around, like, cleaning up after you guys. Did she uh, offer to marry you yet for your uh, the fortune, the Sam Adams fortune? Uh, no, the smell of the beer kind of put her off a little. <laughs> yeah, she does have some standards. Okay, um, uh, <laughs> now making her way to the uh, the O and A booth, Darva. Here comes Darva. She's had a very long day, Opie Conger. Very long day. I got to say, this woman is a trooper. Yeah, she's had a very long day. Nine in the morning. She's been on 45 radio stations. You've done 45 shows? Guys like us all day long. You've done 50 radio shows today? Yeah. What what are some of the crazy things people have been asking you? Well, if I told you that, you might ask me, and then I'd have to get mad and walk off again. Well, we've heard heard that, too. We've heard you've been a little upset with some of the people that have been been on the show. There's been three that I've been less than impressed with, but three out of 50 is not so bad. What did they say that pissed you off? Uh, The number is about to go up to four, so get ready. No, this is my thing. You guys can ask me anything you want. All I I ask is just talk to me like a human being. I'm human. I have feelings. And don't ask me about things that you wouldn't ask somebody that was your sister, your mother, or whatever. Oh, you should see some of the conversations we have with sisters. I imagine. Well, pretend I'm the sister that you really wouldn't want to talk that way to. Yeah. Because I just don't get into it. It's not my deal. No. See, that's what I don't understand uh, to some point though like uh, somebody who's gotten the fame that you've gotten sure. the way you've gotten it you you should have this ultimate sense of humor to be able to put up with what people are going to ask you. Well, first of all, I have an issue with someone telling me what I should or should not have because when well, you become got an, an issue with that question. No, I'm just saying. Let me, no, let me continue. Okay, I don't go mean ahead. that in an adversarial ma- no, way. Go ahead. All I can tell you is the person I have been and the person I always will be, there's certain things I'm not comfortable talking about. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a sort of potty humor, bathroom humor. I'm not good at it. I don't find it funny, so I don't want to talk now, about but, it. But do you realize the Playboy thing? Now, sure. that ends up in a lot of bathrooms and potties. I'm not in there. And, no, the, but it's your a picture. picture. It's right. a picture. But are you? I'm not there. But it would almost be delusional to think that the, that isn't being used. That is by their men. problem. I'm not there. You don't think that's that o- like taking, like saying a photographic representation of somebody is in Siberia, and you know what Siberia is like. You don't think that opens yourself yeah, up for criticism, though. Um, let's put it this way: I'm here as a courtesy, uh, and sure. Mr. Cook invited me here, so as a courtesy, I'm speaking to you guys, and all I'm saying is, you know what? Be grown-ups. Let's talk no. as grown-ups. Let's mm-hmm. let's. Invest. I think we're having a grown-up know, conversation. This is not a personal thing. No, we know. When I say you, it's in the broad sense. All right. And not. But most, but most just of the questions that would be asked of you would be about the Playboy thing. And I'm fine with that. And See, you guys don't understand. No, ask me anything about Playboy. Ask me about the multimillionaire show. Ask me, you moron, what would you go on that show for? Why would you pose nude? I am so fine with any of that. Don't ask me what noises I make when I eat. Don't ask me weird <laughs> sexual questions. That's what but I'm... But that, that's kind of entertaining. No, it's it's not entertaining audience. To me. Someone asked you what noises you make when you eat? Well, I, I sort of edited it for <laughs> the consumption. You know, you oh, know, oh I eat something. Oh, okay. Do you understand I where I'm going? Noises... I'm not, when you I'm, have sex? Is, no, no. No, I'm just asking. Is that what they asked you? No. And let's go ahead and segue away from that. How about I, the guy that... I'm um, not putting any blinder, cons, you know, constraints upon you. I'm just yeah. saying, you know, ask me a question in a reasonable way. I'll answer it in a reasonable way. What are you going to do uh, after the Playboy thing? Oh, wow. I can't talk that, can I? You know what? I'm going to take a little time off. Um, this is my first public appearance. And I'm so happy to be here. It's a great event. Had my first drink of beer here today with the, from the Believe Millennium not, bottle. That was true. Shared, oh, the Millennium. Shared it, we had our shared first, it with Jim. Her first beer. You had your first had beer first today? beer first with beer. me. What were you she doing was saving that? it for um, me. You know, I've just never been a beer drinker. I never had no. the, the, the quality beer. I went through 10 years in the military and four years of college and never drank a beer. So what a day to start. I know. I'm honored. There you, you go. You want to smoke some pot? Um, you know what? I grew up with parents who were hippies. I mean, a name like Darva. Come on. What, what are you going to try to shock me with? No, I'm asking. Do you want to smoke some pot? Uh, you know, when you see your parents doing it every day, it's just no big deal. No? Nah. Yeah, the parents Pass. are smoking the weed and stuff. I, get a, I grew up with a contact high. What are you trying to Now, did, you, did some guy come forward in one of those rag magazines and say that uh, you used to really party and have a lot of Apparently sex? Apparently, I did. Like... Yeah, all those things. I must have been doing GHB at that time because somehow I just don't remember any of that. Really? 
And it's Where just does this guy logical. come from? Did you know who this guy was? Or um, I think he's the older brother of two people I went to high school with. Yeah. I don't know him personally. And he came out and said uh, that you were having you going to parties and just you'd be like very uh, promiscuous. Apparently with, so. That's what yeah. he said. Well, you know the deal is you take a crack addict and give him a lot of money. He'll yeah. say anything you want him to say. Ah, uh, oh. Well, you know, I don't... See, I'm not, I'm not. I'm still not getting the whole thing. Okay. You seem to be very. Um, yeah, certain questions give you a problem. Such as. Well, even Ope was asking one of those questions about. Uh, because about I don't want to talk. About, yeah, I don't want. Why should I? I don't talk about it in in my personal whole, life. I don't talk about my private life, and I whole, certainly don't talk about it in the radio. It's nobody's did, business. But how did you get the whole Playboy thing in your mind to be something other than sexual? For me, it was something about artistry and beauty. And, but for and everyone, nudity, and nudity it does not always have to be sexual. I'm not saying it's not sexy. I'm saying I'm not going to sit up here and talk to you guys about mm -hmm. graphic sexual acts. Just, and if that's the way you go, I'm sure there's a million people. No, no, no. All these people here. They'll you talk think the average person it? picks up Playboy to see right. the art in the pictures? You know, oh, that's crazy. You, with all due respect, I don't I think care you, what I think they in pick your head, it up you, for. You did that so you could justify well, making the money. It was just respect, on the cash. Okay, you guys going to talk to me or going to talk to each other? Oh, me, I'm here. I'm right here. Now she's getting pissed. Off. I'm right it here. Was, no, I'm not mad. No, I think you're doing that to justify, you know. I'm doing what was okay to, for to, me. To the keep photos your, are okay with me. To keep your celebrity what status other people, going. My celebrity status. Oh, yeah. I know. So I we, continue, we all laugh at that. So I can me, continue to do these things because this is so much fun. Well, what else are you going to do? Well, I can go back to my life. I'm sad. I don't need to worry that, about all right. it. So what are you, you going you to do after the whole Playboy thing dies out? I have a happy, contented, healthy life. Oh, well, good. And you went on the uh, millionaire show to, to for what? For what reason? You know what? It was just a fluke. It dropped into my lap. They called me at home. It didn't seem like a big deal. I didn't. I didn't give it the credence that it deserved. I didn't look at the ramifications, and I didn't think I was going to win. There's no but bigger when you story did, you than still, that. You still had to marry the guy, like right there. I did, yeah. And, and so, and I got it an old as soon as I possibly could. So you weren't thinking. I wasn't thinking. It seems like the, like the, the publicity is a big thing with you, or the money is a big no. thing with you. So why do you? The whole thing is publicity and money. That's the whole show. So you what know what? Other you want, you're continuing to go on it in such an illogical manner. I don't even know how to talk to you about it. No, I'm saying it doesn't make any sense. The show wanna... is based on publicity and money. Mm -hmm. So what did you do if it for? you if you presuppose that I knew I would win? Which there, there was just no way going, to know. Going on the show. There was at no all. money for going on the show. Oh, no one else made money no, at all? No. No, not even scale. Nothing. No. So so the publicity thing then? Then you, you know want what? it to be... For me, it was sort of a payoff. Okay, I'll go on TV on a show I thought was kind of dumb because I won't win. It'll be okay. And I'll go to Vegas for a week and do something different that was completely out so of context. So it was for the Vegas trip? I mean, yeah, I, I want to you know, know why no, you did it. I just told you. That's exactly why okay, I did it. Okay, but the, completely the, out of, the question you know what? I was I asking was reasonable. I keep telling you why I did something, God, and you keep arguing with me. Anybody, you're more combative than anybody I've had on this show. You know what? Because with all due respect, you're being so illogical. You ask me a question, I answer you, and then you argue with me like I don't know what I'm talking about. I lived it. I was saying, why did you go on the show, money or publicity? And you neither. said, oh, that's ridiculous. I just said neither one of them. Well, well uh, to get, go on a TV show, it's either for money or publicity. I went on, no, actually, and we just and explained that. And then the free trip to Vegas? Money. Okay, I'll Okay, I guess, I guess that in its way corresponds to money. Yeah. So maybe I can buy into that. As far as publicity, for me, it was sort of a trade-off. I'd go on the TV show for them, and I'd do the thing in Vegas for a week. And you that don't would be the payoff that I made for them. That would be how they, I would sort of compensate them for them sending me to Vegas. And you don't think it seems to to everybody that, that sees you after this whole thing happened that you really do enjoy the publicity and the, um, the popularity of it. If it appears that way to them, that's honestly, it's just not, I can't worry myself about that. I don't, I don't care. Well, was there a point where you said you wouldn't pose uh, nude? No. No? No. No. Would you like me to tell you what I said? Yeah. I said I would not do anything that I considered pornographic or sexually graphic or anything that I would be afraid for my mother to see. And I also said that I did not have a problem with nudity in and of itself because my dad was plan. an artist. But that was... I know mm -hmm. what I say. I know my words. But it's not art. That's your opinion. No, we're it's guys that buy subjective. Playboy. It's not art. Okay, fine. It's yeah. not it's art. art. It's not art. Yeah. I mean, I think you're trying to justify it in your head. I don't need to justify it in my head. I'm fine with it. You want me to justify it to you, and you already have no. your preconceived ideas. I... And you know, with all due respect, I thought I was going to hang out here with Jim and have a nice conversation <laughs> oh, at the end no. of my day. Jim, even, so, Jim hasn't said a word. Well, wait a minute. I'm like Grimace. Darvin, because honestly, with I'm all in due the respect, middle. You guys, wait, wait. Just you, because we don't no, agree with with what you're saying, you're going to get pissed and walk off the show? Why don't we? Why don't we discuss it? Yeah. You're very uptight. Go ahead. Can I finish? You're very, very uptight. Okay, you're not going to let me finish. All right, go ahead. 
I don't have a problem with you, but you have an agenda. We're trying to understand. You're not going to let me finish one sentence, are you? We're, tr oh we're trying okay. to understand you. Go ahead. All right, okay. we'll let Darva talk because it's Thank so important. About the agenda. Well, you're interviewing me last time I checked. Go ahead. No, but you're, I can't ask questions, so go you're ahead. It's Darva's radio questions. show. Let's Thank go. You. Darva. This is what Darva has to say. Okay. I don't have a hidden agenda. I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to lie about. Mm -hmm. What I did was a dumb idea, and I've been very honest about that, and I'm very sorry that I did it. Going in Playboy, I don't have a problem with it. It worked for me. It was but you wouldn't be in Playboy if you did the dumb thing. Once it, right? I didn't go and do the dumb thing to go into Playboy. All right, you, you admit happened. you did a dumb thing with uh, Rick Wa Absolutely. Rockwell and all that, who's a Are complete loser. Are you gonna, ever going to let me finish this? But you did a dumb okay. thing, and now instead yeah, of like so sorry. now instead of going I away, do you're ex I feel I bad. Really I'm feel like I'm in the middle of just walking okay, off bye -bye. another show. I, I don't understand this. One more question. Darva, one more question. One more. One more. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica Hahn. Thank you, Jessica Hahn. One more question. Ah, we're so right. It's not even funny. Scorch, go chase after her naked. I don't. I don't get it. You know, you try. You try so hard. Jim, oh my God. Jim, you're a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's such a pussy. Nick, right. Nick, come on over here, man. I feel like a pussy. I feel Jim. I feel Jim, bad. I feel like I'm in the middle of. Jim, the only thing you guys have in common is, you know, both of you had like one bad day in your life where you made a dumb decision. <laughs> yeah, but Barbara, Barbara, can I have a word with you, please? Miss Conger, please, can I have a word with you? Oh, please, Miss Conger, I really want to speak oh, to you. Oh, that's I got that 25 on the phone bucks with you needed Oh, Scorch is talking to uh, Darva. Miss Conger, please, I need to speak with you now. Nah, she's gone. She's oh, going to my right. hotel room, I think, but I'm not sure. We chased her out. She has, she has yeah. jumped into her limousine. Right. I got to say, hang up on six. That, uh, that, that Jim Cook was uh, uh, sitting in between Anthony and Darva the whole time, and yeah. he would not move. No. <laughs> No, you know I wouldn't either. I was like in the line of fire. I was Jim, bullets Jim, everywhere. Jim did just fine. Can I can I ask you what finally got her up and out of here? Because I interviewed her like probably about an hour and a half ago, and she walked over to me and like she was walking out. You guys are like Darva, one more question. She walked by, and I just kind of looked at her, and she kind of like grabbed my shoulder like for support. And I'm going, hey, you know, <laughs> hey, you're on your own, lady. <laughs> you know, hey, right? You know, find a towel and just throw it. All right? Yeah. I, you know something, Nick. Uh, Nick Carter, PCN, joining PCN us right Boston. now. Let me tell you something. We did nothing that we would do to upset somebody. We were asking her legitimate questions right. about uh, her her so-called fame, how she got there, the Playboy thing. And unless, I guess, you're you're asking her about... I don't even know what you could ask her about. What did she seem like? No, if you ask her about hopping on the knob, she's going to get pissed. We could have we could have made her uh, walk off within 30 seconds, but yeah. we were having a serious conversation with her. I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. Well, what she, made a, she admits she made a big mistake in her life going right. on that millionaire show, right? So what does she do? Does she fade back into her regular life and uh, and, and her family and friends? No, she that, milks that, it. That is, uh, you know, probably pretty close to her in her her personal life. Right. No, she milks it. She looks at all her opportunities. She realized there weren't many opportunities after the Millionaire Show. The only opportunity that made sense was the Playboy thing. I'm sure uh, Swank and all the rest called, and yeah. she picked Playboy. I am sad. It felt like she's getting a, a guest, a, 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 a guest appearance on Drew Carey or something. I, I got her right after one of the other radio stations had, uh, I guess, tried to basically, uh, you know, be pretenders to the throne and pull an opiate. Could you show us your technique? I don't yeah, know. We what didn't it was. even do that. No, we could have done that, and she would have walked in 30 seconds. But I really wanted to try to understand what her motive was right. to, to pose and Playboy when you could tell in the beginning she had no desire to, play, to pose in Playboy but then she realized you know what my fame is uh, is fading away fast I gotta do something I'm she going I'm going me. in Playboy she, just like Jessica Hahn and all the rest right, of them yeah. she told the me whores. she told me she went to Playboy and I said to her I said look you know what I mean you gotta understand people are gonna question your you know your whole thing and she told me she went to Playboy only because she'd lost her job as a nurse but then she sat and she started talking about well I said well what's next for you well I really want to advance the agenda of health care believe it or not nurses are underpaid and a lot of doctors are underpaid and I just said to her look you know what I mean you know disrespect but I mean yeah showing your snatch yeah. is a great way to get that yeah, yeah right well yeah. it solved the Who's underpaid gonna take... problem <laughs> and I'm going to take you seriously it's like I've seen your kahinki right you know I know where babies come from on you what are you talking about <laughs> and I love the people that they just they try to justify it by saying it's it's art you know something playboy no and playboy no. I'm sorry it, we're guys we understand more than she does what playboy is all about Hey, my whole thing is, God bless you. If you've got that kind of body and you have that mind.
modicum of fame, and Hugh wants to give you a million dollars. Take the money and run and be but, happy. But don't BS. I asked her why she went on the Millionaire Show in the first place. Was it th for fame or money? Uh, Nick, neither. Right. Now, bull don't give me that. She's she, she seems like the type me. of person that really wants to be famous. She told me there were 60 girls who were contestants, and she never in a million years thought that she was going to be fine. the winner. All which fine. is fine. Which is like, all right, well, then you went into it assuming you're going to lose. Then why, why do the show? Right, why? And, and when they picked you at the end, why not just walk off the show and say, you know what? This is going a little too far for me. I was coming to Vegas or wherever it was for a vacation. Yeah. We would love to ask her these things, but she seems to have walked off the program. Somehow we knew she would. And I know the listeners. And it wasn't even a bad I know bad the listeners are going to call us pussies and stuff. Yeah, we could have talked about her nipples and stuff, whatever. And she would have been gone in two seconds. She would have been gone in two seconds, but I really wanted to get inside her head because I, I want to un understand why she did it. That's you know, all. are we crazy? Because we asked what we thought were legitimate questions. Did you ask her about the nose job? No. no. We could have asked about the no, nose the, job, the, Nick, the, the spackle like, makeup, the you know. Your gentler right. Yeah, but, Jim, <laughs> I, I know what happened to you guys. Up. What Nick, happened to you Nick, guys? Nick, Nick, Jim, Jim over here, he didn't move. This is my impression of Jim. I know it's radio. Ann and Darv are going at it. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. he was just sitting there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, he wouldn't. How about move. a beer? Darby, yeah. take a breath, Elijah. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Look at this way. Like, were they pretty much uh, her last interview? Yes. yes. They hey. last. Yeah. See, they did that on purpose. I know, right? We want to get her early and it really screw it up for everyone it here. It could have been worse. <laughs> it could have been worse. Um, it, you could have paid her the grand or whatever you paid her, and she could have been gone by 1030 this morning. You know? I know. Uh, See, well, they were looking to leave, and then Jim told us that he went to her and said, Hey, you know, we'd like you to do O&A. It's the one last interview and stuff. And thank you, Jim. Thank well, you. See, I and we were trying to be she nice was a and everything. And she had to suck it up. I really worked hard. <laughs> see, Jim, wow. See, I, Jim loves us, but he also understands us. Yeah. Yes. You know, he wasn't going to give us Darva first because he has 50 other stations that needed to interview Darva today. Well, I mean, my hands were kind of tied because I was before Dar before you guys. And I didn't, because we said yesterday, he's like, who do you think's going to piss her off first, you or me? And I was like, all right, well, it depends on who draws the short straw and who gets to get her left. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't want to piss her off because I knew then, like, if I pissed her off and she just got in the limo and took off, then I got Opie and Anthony up my ass saying, well, we didn't talk to Darver Conger because of that douche Nick Carter in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> and the listeners were ruthless. Some of the questions they wanted to ask, uh, Jim, what's it like to be a money-grubbing whore? Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, would you take my allowance uh, for oral? Uh, don't Can't wait for her to walk, throw her off the show. Stuck up pig. Stuck up throw pig, her throw her off. off. Let's make Darva cry. Uh, d uh, Darva, will you marry me for my insurance money? Uh, Mandy's saying that Darva did it for charity reasons. Darva actually is Mother, uh, Mother Teresa. And some people saying within a year she'll end up in porno. And uh, yeah, but, yeah, she needs another be, Prozac. Do you think it'll be that girly porn, that like real politically correct soft core? Yeah, yeah that she no could good. call art. Right. <laughs> <laughs> as long as she could label it art. All right. I'll, I'll make the Darva Conger uh, uh, prediction here, okay? Another three or four months goes by. She realized, oh, my God, no one's paying attention to me. So she'll get the boob job. Oh, that'll be it. The, pre the breast implant. That everyone's been so now about. Hugh Hefner wants her back in Playboy to show off her uh, her brand new fun bags, a la Jessica Hahn. And right. Bye-bye. Another throwaway celebrity. Goodbye. I'm sick of the throwaway celebrities in this goddamn country of ours. Yeah. Well, that was the thing. It's like when they came over, like her, her, her handlers came over, and there was a, like, and I was telling Jim this, like, there was like three of them that came over, and they're like, all right, please be nice to Darba, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, this is bitch think she's Cindy Crawford? Who is she? I know. I mean, That's I, what it is. How do you get handlers and, and that you have have to be nice. What? What's nice? Right. We were asking her questions that were nice. Yeah, we could have said. Can it be? Three, Off she goes in the limo. Yeah, three words and she could have been gone. And so Darva, spit or swallow would have been over right there. Yeah. Did we do that? We could have done that. No. Well, we she could have easily done that. She told me she would answer any question I would ask her as long as I asked it in a polite manner. So basically, you know, I could have asked her politely if she liked anal, but I didn't. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, there's there's a million different ways to do that. If you want to be an outrageous on your hero. Hero. Ho, ho. <laughs> but I mean, it's a little deeper than that. I really wanted to try to understand, you know, what was going on. And in she got, head. you know, we're trying to put a finger on the pulse of the listener and, and and ask the questions we think the listeners want to want to hear. And she was getting very defensive. Oh yeah, at, at oh, every yeah. turn. And it's like, all right, you know, you've been through fifty stations. I understand, but you've got, you know, you either answer these questions because you, you, the only reason you're famous is because of the questions I'm asking you. Hey, let's go to line. She gets all fed up. Let's go to line four because Gina, Gina is very surprised.
She's, Hi, guys. she's like, you guys were extremely professional. Gina, what's going on? Hi, guys. You guys were totally awesome. I thought I was listening to Tom Brokenjaw or something. We were being, uh, we were, we were reining it back, just for it her benefit. It was. It was easy prey. She was like the the gazelle with the broken leg. We didn't want to go there. We wanted to really, you know, kind of like like tease her with our paws a little bit before we went in for the kill. Fat the uh, seal around like the killer whale does <laughs> yeah, for a while exactly. before you eat it, you know? That was too easy for, for uh, Ant and I, but yeah. uh, uh, Jesus. What is she, you know, something? Everybody she's had interviews with has had some kind of problem. Where she's had a problem with these people. Was she, the was, Today Show, everything. Was she looking at Jim Cook to sort of like, Daddy, save me? Yeah. 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 A little and, bit. And Jim wasn't even having it. He was just like, I'm enjoying my cherry wheat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just having a beer. You're on your own, lady. <laughs> <laughs> You're paid in full. Your check is cleared. Check Don't even worry about it. Limo. Suck it up. Suck, Suck it, it up. up. You're a professional. Suck it up. <laughs> All and right. by the way, spit or swallow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there's All our okay. there's our Darver interview. Exclusive Darver Hunger interview. Tom I, Brugge, I don't think MSB any, Nightly News. I don't think anyone's surprised you walked off our show. Yeah. Hell, she walked off uh, the show in you know Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they're not doing yeah. outrageous radio. She's just an uptight bitch. Tell the truth. You look forward to this all day. So you, <laughs> yeah. We knew it was going to happen. I mean, it's no surprise. Surprise. Tom Brokaw, NBC Nightly News. My music's too loud. <laughs> Darvik Hunger walks off at yet another talk show. How come when she comes on NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw over my show, I, don't, I could have sat there and said, Hey, Darva, spit or swallow. Akbar went down off of the Achille Lauro. <laughs> little news reference from Embassy Night News. Thank you. I was biting my tongue, too, because I, I, I had some atom bombs, but I'm like, no, you know what? I'm just going to get to her on a very, very intelligent level. We have the last line that she said when she walked up the show. Here, oh, really? Here she is. Screw you guys. I'm going home. All right. <laughs> Sounding like Cartman. <laughs> Stay there. It's ONA broadcasting live from the Sam Adams Brewery in Boston, Massachusetts.